Hello, everyone. I'm Dan Brees, Chief Medical Officer and Vice President for Physician Services for Memorial Health System. And today I have Dr. Francis Watzler, one of the infectious disease specialists at Memorial Health System. We both wanted to give you an update today regarding where we are in the COVID-19 pandemic. We wanted to discuss a few things that we think are very important for the community to be focused on and what we could use your help with during this pandemic. So I'll start today by asking Dr. Watskier a few key questions. Dr. Watskier, right now everybody is watching this disease curve that is on TV all the time. Would you make some comments about where you think we are on that curve and what the community can do to help you with this? Yeah, so I want to let the community know that this time is crucial and that even though we're a small community, we cannot underestimate the situation being different from other states that are dealing with like a high number of deaths. But we are gonna get to the peak of the curve and we're gonna face the most critical times during the weeks ahead, meaning that we're gonna have an increased number of cases and we're gonna hit the peak of that curve and we're gonna get a lot more death and a lot more cases from this disease and they should be aware about that. So again, you feel that this is absolutely the critical phase that we're in right now. And there's a lot of things that we can be doing to help prevent the spread of the disease. Yes, and we have seen that because we know that we've had an increased number of cases in the past couple of days, and that's gonna continue to be like that for the next couple of weeks. And the most important part is that by us doing more testing in the community, we're gonna be able to know if we have more cases and the same way we can tell them what's, what are the right things to do at the time. But I think this time is critical for them to understand that by seeing an increased number of cases, we're, we're getting to community spread in our community. Okay, very well. Um, what can the community do right now to help prevent the spread of this disease? What can we tell our folks watching the video today to do? Okay, and, and I want to let the community know, first we wanna thank everyone for all the efforts in this critical time, but this is the time to stay home. And we have been enforcing this uh, during the past couple of weeks, but again, this is a crucial time and you need to stay home. This is not the time to go to the grocery store. And if there's something that you need to get outside, you can designate someone from your um, household and just make sure like not everyone's going out because for the next at least two couple of weeks, we need to make sure that you stay home. This is the only thing that has been shown that decreases the rate of spread of disease in the communities. And again, we cannot underestimate the situation just because we're a small town. Perfect. What else can they be doing at home other than staying at home, what can they do when they're at home to help prevent the spread of disease as well? Well, we, they should continue social distancing because that's what we need to enforce right now. This is not the time to be laxed on social distancing. Continue social distancing, no gatherings, and continue hand washing. That's one of the most important parts. Um, water and soap or any hand sanitizer uh, with percentage of alcohol more than 65%. and. Um, one thing that I wanted to clarify is that if you have someone at home that is sick, you need to make sure the, like that person gets medical attention and make sure like we're, you're keeping social distancing just to try to prevent the spread of disease even in your own house. Great. That's great information. Um, I also would like to talk a little bit about today what I think is one of the big topics, that, of course, that was all over the news and, and social media this past weekend. Um, that topic is, is, is on masks, and I would like for you to comment a little bit um, on personal protective equipment, uh, specifically homemade masks, and what should we be telling our community members and educating them on in regard to those masks? Yes, and we know that that, one, that was one of the most recent recommendations for people to use masks if they need to go out. And I just want to let the community know this is from most of like the most recent studies uh, it has been shown that people who lack symptoms, they can transmit disease. And that's why this recommendation has now been made because we have been talking about no wearing masks when you go outside. But again, I don't want to, I don't want for people to think that just because there's a recommendation on wearing masks that you can go out and you're going to be safe just wearing a mask. You're still at risk of getting infection. Again, we have been talking about touching your face and eyes 
because you need to be wearing the mask and just uh, adjusting it. And again, you're gonna be at risk of getting infected. So this is not the time to go out. And if you need to, you can wear your mask. But again, we're just enforcing social distancing at this time. Very good information. Um, I'd like to update the community now a little bit as to what we are continuing to do to ensure the safety of our patients, our staff, and all of our employees that come into the building. So I thought I'd just start with a few bullet points that I want everyone in the community to know. Currently at Memorial Health System, we are currently abiding by our visitor restriction policy. Um, this is actually no visitors are allowed in the building unless it is essential for the care of the patient. Examples of that would be if a pediatric or a child uh, was here in our facility receiving care, uh, they would need a decision maker, a guardian that is here for them. Um, also, if somebody was undergoing a procedure of any type, we would need to have at least one person here to uh, be a decision maker. And of course, there are some exceptions for end of life care uh, uh, as is needed to have family around the patient. Since we last talked, actually, uh, we are now taking temperatures at, at all of our access points, which have been restricted throughout the health system. We're taking temperatures uh, on all patients, as well as visitors that come into the facility. And we're also asking uh, all of our employees, and, and we're making them do this at home actually too, to self-monitor their temperatures. If they have a temperature, we are not allowing them to come at work at this time, and we're entering them, in them into a monitoring process through employee health. Since we last talked, we've actually opened three different units in the building to house our COVID positive patients and patients that are under investigation. Currently, we have set aside 50 beds at this time to house those patients. Um, and as we need more beds, if that is necessary in the future, we have additional plans for that. Um, this will continue to keep those patients that are under investigation or are currently positive with the COVID-19 virus um, away from the other patients that are receiving care in our facility. And then lastly, um, we did open an assessment clinic. That assessment clinic is currently today located at Wayne Street, but will be moved tomorrow to another site that will be at our Physician Care Express located on Pike Street in Marietta. This will allow us to see patients through an assessment line, if you will. Patients will be able to drive through this area in their vehicle, um, receive a test and or be seen and evaluated by a provider um, during those hours that will be published uh, by tomorrow morning. So again, there will be a move of that clinic. You still need to know, though, that in order to receive this test, you need to contact your primary care doctor. Um, you can also call our 24-hour nurse line, which the number is available on our website, um, or call the Memorial Care Now app, which is available for download on our website. They will uh, give you instructions as to how to obtain that test and receive the appropriate order so you can get that testing um, done. Dr. Watskier, I want to also mention just a few things because I think we're taking a lot of steps between the two of us and all of our teams in this building um, together are doing everything we can do to keep our patients safe, our staff safe, and our employees safe. And I think it's really important for the community to know um, that they can still get their care. We know that you all in the community still need to receive good, high-quality health care and now, ever more than ever, is it important to receive that care in a safe environment. So all of the steps that we've talked about before are ensuring your safety and the safety of others. Um, we've also taken a few other steps, though, that I'd like to mention today. Over the last couple of weeks, we were able to launch telehealth. Um, we are using that almost in all of our primary care doctor offices, as well as some of our specialty clinics. This means that at home, if you need to be seen by your doctor, you can contact your primary care doctor's office or the 24-hour nurse line, and they will help navigate you to that telehealth visit. Often, they're able to see you same day um, at home. If you don't have the ability to use a, a means of video, such as uh, FaceTime or other type of uh, video program, we can also see you, uh, we can also talk with you, I should say, over the telephone and hopefully meet the needs that you have that day. Of course, we still have clinics open for face-to-face -face visits, um, somewhat limited right now as we're in this critical phase, as you pointed out, but I think it's important to know that we still have the ability to have patients seen should they need to. Two other options I know I've already previously mentioned, but I think are very important. Um, is we can see you via our telehealth app, which is the Memorial Care Now app. 
that is available for download with instructions on our website, as well again as our 24-hour nurse line. I can't emphasize that enough. I know our volume of calls have gone up tremendously, but this is a free service for everyone who lives in our community. Uh, we are happy to provide that and we want you to use that should you have any questions about your health. It is staffed 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year by a registered nurse and they will help navigate you uh, through your questions that you may have and get you uh, referred to another area of our health system if needed. And then lastly, I'd like to say that our marketing team and our uh, information technology team have come up with a way on our website uh, to, to provide a link to our COVID-19 updates. There'll be a link on our website that you can click on. Um, if that is at mhsystem.org backslash coronavirus. And when you log on to that, that website, you will get all of the most recent updates in regards to the COVID-19 pandemic. So I think that's what I was thinking about today to really update the community. Um, I really appreciate your time as I think that is very important that we continue to update our community and we encourage the community to not only get their health care, but ask us any question that you may have at any time. We at Memorial Health System, we are here for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.